so you guys mostly know Red Sam's plant, Holly, Jacob. Well, I just wanted to introduce some, uh, some partners that came aboard with us, which is Zach and Mark Oldham. Um, with Red Sam's, they've done great and helped our company just continue to grow like crazy. But we're starting a new division and they're here to share that with you. Come on, guys. Can you come run it? Can you come click yeah. on it? Awesome. So, hey, first and foremost, thank you guys for having us today. I know when someone sees a PowerPoint, there's only five slides. So I promise it's going to be fast. It's going to be to the point. Um, if there's any questions, I just want you to hold them to the end because we're going to be moving pretty quick and uh, hopefully it'll be awesome. So um, this is our, just so you guys know, kind of the vision of our company. And this isn't a cheesy tagline. We're really, really committed to this helping our investors win from the very beginning. It's something that kind of sets us apart as a property manager. We start with people right as early as we can. If it's literally the foundation of their home going in, we help them design the whole thing to be a rental. So, and you'll see that here in just a second. So RSVP is an acronym for Red Sands Vacation Properties. So you hear me say that Red Sands Vacation Properties RSVP. So the vision of our company is to partner with property owners by helping them design, create, price, market, and maintain their investment property with the goal of maximizing their return on investment and achieving their individual goals. So we work with lots of different types of investors. It's not just people trying to get the most money out of their homes. A lot of these people love to come on vacation to these homes too. So we do a lot of uh, give and take with our investors. Then you go to the next one. Okay, so this is kind of what makes us different. I know you guys are probably familiar with lots of different company management or uh, vacation management companies. This is kind of the things that make us different. So the first is we have a customized design and vision for every single property uh, that starts with an in-house furniture team. So we have an entire furniture division. We literally sell rental approved furniture. So your average couch can hold you know, 200 pounds per seat. In a vacation rental, you guys have probably heard this before, nothing parties like a rental. Someone's gonna come in, jump on that couch, smash it. So we don't sell Ikea furniture. We don't compete with Ikea. This is just vacation approved furniture. We sell kind of all the bones and then we have an in-house design team that will go and help them get their property set up to maximize the uh, long-term benefits of having really, really great furniture. So that's just one aspect of it. We have a complete dynamic pricing uh, software package that we pay for. And we have a dedicated team that all they do is focus on making sure that our pricing is the very most up-to-date for the specific home that we're representing. Um, second part of that is timing in the marketplace. We're not an occupancy focused company. So if we can get your home to maximize the benefit or maximize your return and only have to rent your property out for 15 nights a month, we will do that. So we're not going to put your property up for $200 a night and rent it 30 nights a month, right? We're going to try and get $600 a night, which is a bigger return. So you still have the flexibility to use your property. That's another thing that kind of separates us. And on the flip side, that's less wear and tear on your unit, right? Like thinking about if we do it all the time at a cheap rate, that's going to wear out on that furniture going huge, right that. Huge, yep. And I can maximize it, get the least wear and tear on it. That's the win. Yep, that's the win. So smart home technology, locks, thermostats, routers, we handle all of that stuff. So we really do a, a full, from the foundation all the way up, professional on-call reservationists and maintenance team seven days a week. We also have something that is really, really rare. We have a dedicated owner services team. This means when an owner of a property calls in, they're not just going to get, you know, my cell phone number. We have a team that is 100% professionally trained to handle all owner questions, Samantha. which is a big deal. It's a big deal. So you're not just getting a normal reservationist who takes bookings. You're getting someone who's trained to take care of your needs. So we, we really focus on the investors. They're our very top priority in representing them. The second part of that is, and it's not up here, we have a team that goes through and they check every single clean before the guest shows up. So our cleans, how we maintain such a high standard of five-star reviews we have really great, really great cleaning companies that we work with, but we have one of our own people who's trained to go through and they literally grade every single clean. So if something's missed by the cleaner, the guest never sees it. That's another big thing that we do. We invest a lot of money into that team training them. So I like to say it, we're the largest vacation rental company in Southern Utah. So we have the horsepower of a market titan, but the attention to detail and heart of a small family owned company. So I know it sounds cheesy, but I really, I, really, I mean it. <laughs> you go to the next one. Okay, so really quick. The big announcement is that we are going into the monthly property management. So a little bit more long-term rentals, okay? This just gives you a really brief idea of the pros and cons of both. And this is what we present to investors. Okay, monthly, consistent income, right? We can lock your home up, home up for six months a year. Uh, low maintenance, right? People are going to nest in there. It's not a lot of in and out, in and out, in and out. 
The cons, it's a way lower return on investment, right? Your opportunity to make a bunch of money from a long-term rental is way less. Second part of that is you don't have as much access to your vacation property, right? If someone's in there for six months, at six months, you can't see it. Nightly, the pros, way higher, way higher ROI, flexible access to the property. The only con is there's typically a little bit more maintenance and handholding when you have lots of guests going in and out. The good news is we handle all that for you. You can go to the next slide, Jake. Okay, so with monthly vacation rentals, there's a couple of things that we are doing differently going into this space that hopefully separate us from other people who manage long-term vacation rentals. Um, the first one is we repackage the whole formula for nightly rentals, focusing on monthly vacation rentals. We feel we can maximize the return for monthly rentals and provide a customized owner experience for every type of investor. So all the things we offer to nightly rentals, we, offer, we also offer all those things, the design, the furniture, you know, the pricing, all of that stuff, that goes as well. But these are two things that are different. Auto host technology, okay? This is artificial intelligence technology. We literally have, it's a, it's a massive algorithm, but it goes in and it assesses the risk of every single renter. So if someone says, hey, I wanna stay in your property, they give us their name, their email, their address, their credit card information. It's an application to us. We take all of that information and it goes and it checks social media, it checks their email, it checks their address, make sure it's a real address in a real town and they're really the ones registered to that address. It kicks out a risk assessment score. So we can guarantee, it also does soft credit checks, it also does criminal background, all that kind of stuff. The reason for that is we don't want people scoring below a certain threshold staying in your property, right? You've got an $800,000, $1 million home. We want to make sure that every single person is vetted basically as far as we literally can. So that's really a big thing that differentiates us. Uh, the second part is mandatory mid-state checks. We come into the property. Our person has a little welcome basket or a gift basket. We try to make this as painless for the guests as possible. We're really checking on the property. We're also checking on them, make sure that they're respecting the property. But by having a little gift, we feel like it kind of softens that. And we also want to make sure that their state is going really great. So mid-state checks for every single guest. That's a big deal. You can go to the name for the second. Okay, so this is kind of an innovation. And before I tell you guys this, I know this is going to be the thing you have the most questions about. Uh, hold your questions till the end. Um, and this will be really quick. But um, first and foremost, we want to make sure that we abide by all the city codes and all the laws. We feel like we have a way to do that and market these monthly vacation rentals as nightly. And I'll show you how. Okay, we market the property as a nightly or a monthly vacation rental, but the pricing structure will be based on getting nightly rates for peak weeks. Okay, uh, in specific months that we already know draw lots of top dollar bookings. So we have 150 vacation rentals right now. We know that Thanksgiving, you can get more money for that one week than you can the entire month of November. We literally have the data to prove it. Okay, so that's kind of the theory of this uh, idea. All paperwork and legal communication between Red Sands Vacation Properties and the guests verifies that the guests have rented the property for a full 30 day period. Full 30 days is the key there. Uh, lower wear and tear on your property as the guest is probably not gonna be there for the full 30 days. So online, when someone goes to book the property, we have a seven night minimum. So they go, they find your gorgeous vacation home. It's only in an area, right? This area is not approved for nightly rental, but they can still book that for just seven nights, but they're technically booking it for the entire month. So no one else will be in there for the rest of the month, but they're only gonna be there for seven days. Does that make sense? You guys can kind of see how that idea works. Um, so that is lower wear and tear. The cool thing about this is, it's a way higher return on investment if that's the goal, because nightly rates are so much higher. We have one booking that could be eight to $10,000 for one week. Well, if you're familiar with vacation rentals for monthlies, you can't get eight to $10,000 for a monthly. Now that's the high end, but even if it's five or six, it's still double your return. And I have the numbers here in just a second. You go to the next slide. Okay, these are critical application dates. These are the weeks, right, that we're talking about. You can get way more money for one week than an entire month. It seems backwards, but that's the way that it works. Okay, Christmas, Thanksgiving, fall break, the Ironman, July is a peak month. We run out the whole month of July. Weeks go really easy, Memorial Day, spring break. You can go to the next slide. Okay, here's the numbers. If you've got a monthly vacation rental and you're averaging $27.50 a month, that's gross, right? That's before you have expenses and other things. And your occupancy rate is 90%, meaning 90% of the year you're getting someone to pay you $27.50 a month. Estimated total annual ROI is $29,700. We, if your focus is just return on investment and you don't want to use the property, we can get that same property over $45,000 a year by marketing those specific weeks only and then doing all the paperwork for a full month. 
Okay, if the primary investor focus is maintaining the return on investment at 29.7 and you want to be able to have access to your property, we can keep your return at 29.7 and we can free up four to six months of the year, depending on the size of the property. There's some give and take there, but we can definitely free up three plus months a year for your investors to be able to use their own property and they keep their annual return the same as if they were running it out 90% of the time. So that's kind of the innovation. We're, we're starting to pitch this to investors and show them. Um, you can go to the next slide. And that's it. So. It's <laughs> <laughs> only five minutes. It's only five minutes. He's I think you're stuck. It's close. I'm sorry. No, um, you're good. That was, that was awesome. I'm, I'm sure there's some questions. Um, cadence, everybody. Cadence. <laughs> My first question is on that 30 day rental and hey, they're going to be there for seven days. Yep. Does your contract with that tenant stipulate that they're renting it for the month, but they're only allowed access for a week? No. Before, before you answer, will you just restate the question just because I have about a 10 online? So just restate the question and then. Absolutely, yeah. So the, the way the contract would be written, the, so question, what was this? Yeah, the question was Does the contract stipulate they can only be there for the seven days that we're marketing? Or does it specify they can be there for the entire month? The answer is they legally have that rented for the entire month. They have to, right? To have it be actually a large rental. So all paperwork, there's no expectation. They could come for a week, go home and come back if they wanted. That entire 30 day period. Now it doesn't follow calendar months, right? It could go from the 15th of one month to the 15th of the next, but it just makes sense to think of it like calendar months. So the answer is on paper in every way, shape, and form. Now we have a smart home system. We know if they're in the property or not. And the code, we can have the codes go active and inactive at specific times. So there is gonna be a little bit of trial and error there, finding out what people are really willing to do. But if you're traveling from far away, you're not just gonna come back, but they could. And, and we work with the guests on that. So as an owner, you can't book it for the entire month. And then all of a sudden, right after they leave, jump in the property, if that's kind of what you're alluding to. Wayne is just concerned about your ability to prevent them from being there the whole month. Yeah, well, and, and 100%, we have control over the home because of the smart locks. We, I can literally pull my phone out right now and unlock any one of our properties or lock one of our properties and make their code not active. But legally, but, but legally I wouldn't. Their code would be active for that entire month, 100%. It's the only way to abide by the law. Couldn't you say, hey, you're renting it for the month? but you're only allowed to be there during these days? We absolutely, so just to be 100% honest, we're totally transparent as a company. This is something that we just had this brand new idea and it's just starting to be implemented. So that's a great question. We haven't tried it yet to see. And we wanna also test the threshold of what the cities are willing to accept because we don't want other people, right? We don't wanna get in trouble with the cities by any means. We wanna follow the, the letter of the law to the you know 10th level, right? We don't want to, but yeah, we could word it that way. And if that would work, then you have even more flexibility. Now you couldn't double book, right? right. But the owner, the owner could come in technically if that were the case. And if the city allows that, we will absolutely do that. So I, I think we have a couple of questions. So you're saying we don't have any track record of success or failure yet, right? Correct. There's just not a whole lot of data out there to provide it. So it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a pretty niche market, I would assume, right? It's probably... Because if I think I, I, I'm not in the nightly weekly rental area anyway, so am I going to gamble on saying I'm going to buy a house and then rent it once, you know, uh, only a month at a time? And so what he's trying to get at is that for those that want to do it short term and maybe a lump, month long, they can do it that way. Or let's say I'm in transition where my renter is going to be out in October. And then as a, I'm going to do a long term, but maybe for just the month of November, I'm like, oh sweet, I can I can tag on and make my next renter come in in December or January and rent it out one week of both of those months. And now as a long-term renter, I capitalize on a couple of the holidays in transition, right? Maybe you could set up your rental in that way. We have contracts that run October and then 12 months essentially, and then you can tag on to those months that are extra. I don't know. I'm trying to think of how do we apply this and how do we use this to the the consumer, but the it's an option. Thing, the one thing to know, we do have a track record of this, that these weeks we're referring to, uh -huh. we are sold out. And so what, what's know, roughly the amount I can make on a three bed, two bath house? On that week? On that, oh, yeah, just in, in uh, 
It depends on the amenities, right? It's it's so critical, and that's so a part of us going in and helping working. We are a hot tub dealer. We sell swim spas. Like we we go in, and we're not trying to make money on that. We want you to get that into your rental because the rental goes up thirty percent, just like that. Boom. So we will go into a property and they'll say, "What kind of return can I make?" I will say, "Let's not even talk about that. Let's talk about what return can you make after we pimp your house out?" Yeah. Right? Like that's the idea. We want to we want to represent winners. So right. we've had people come to us and say, represent our property. And we said, the way your property is right now, it's not going to be a winner. You're going to want to sell this in six months, right? We'll, we'll have you call Holly to sell it, right? So, like, so, if I, so if I'm an agent, right? And I'm like, I have somebody that calls me and says, hey, I'm, I'm interested in a, a house that I can rent out monthly, right? We have one right now, right, Arnold? And he's in the higher price point, right? And so what, what do I help? How do I help him, right? Arnold, especially since he's brand new, he probably can't have a super confident conversation, but if you think if you connected him with these guys that you could slam dunk a deal? If he, I say, and we, we partner with like realtors, it's the reason why we're here, we wanted to give this information. We can, I mean, to use the word guarantee, we have a huge track record of showing the returns for all different levels of homes on those weeks. So it's not more risky. If you're doing a monthly rental long-term and you're not willing to switch to this, I just don't know why. We can get you more money for your home and there's no risk to you really. Mm -hmm. And you'll get to use it more if that's what you want. Right. Or you'll just make a lot more money and you'll have a way lower tear, way lower uh, wear and tear on your home. Yeah, so it really depends on the home. Yeah. And its amenities about it. We are charging for like one thing we've driven up over the last year and a half. St. George, when I first showed up down here, I was appalled. I've, I've done these rentals in other places, uh, Tennessee and Florida, when I got here. I saw these six bedroom homes being rented out for $2.99 a night. I was like, who would buy this home? And it was all over St. George. It was a lot. The property management companies had driven the prices down to try and get a lot of uh, occupancy. Occupancy, right? But they weren't making any money. And so then the people are all selling uh, their home because they're like, hey, I, I spent $600,000. I'm making, you know, a large every So store. that's a point of emphasis. We work to lower our fees and raise the nightly rates. Because fees don't get split with the owners. You understand how that works? Yeah. No property management company splits their fees that they charge with the owners. So a lot of the property managers will lower the nightly rate to drive occupancy up and get lots of bookings. And then they make their money in the fees. So they're like, I'm willing to go 25, 20, 10% of my management mm -hmm. fee. I'll make all my money on the fees anyways. That's a great point. And I have to pause because we have a 45 to 50 minute appointment. And I do. this is worth probably a whole hour class. Would everybody agree? Let's go to class. Yep. Yep. Now, at, at your convenience and whoever in the community feels like we can do it, can we put that on the calendar? We would love to do a class. And we'll okay. have, by that time, we will have a couple we're doing this with. Katie, Katie, if you'll take note of that, and then I'm recording this so it's uh, perfect for posterity. Last question, and then we got to keep rolling. Just so that they bring it into a class, something that I would want to see is if they go in and they limp out the house, like we need a swim spa, we need a lot yep. this. What is my client's expense compared to great? I'll just spend 50 grand, but yep. if I'm only gonna make 45,000 in a year, I just made no money because they just picked up the house. So something like that. We know? have just all of those numbers because we're doing that with our nightlies right now. We have all of those numbers. So we can okay. show you the data to show you. Yeah, this we'll is how much it costs. This is the average return for these levels of homes. Perfect. And, and we'll, that's, that's what we want to see. What, and what I'll do is what, I'll have a form. And if, if you're going to the class, I'll say, hey, submit your questions. And then I can give it to you guys a couple days in advance.